Hello, my name is Gad Lin, and I lead the assessment and research functions at Michigan Language Assessment. Today, I'd like to share with you some research findings based on our MET test, which I hope can help to inform teaching and learning in your classroom. In particular, I will cover the different subskills involved in reading, their relationship with one another, and implications for how we might order the teaching of these subskills. When learners sit down to take the MET, they will see a reading section or a listening section. In reality, when we develop these tests, each item is actually tagged for the underlying language functions, knowledge, and abilities that they need to perform or that they need to have in order to answer each item correctly. An item might have more than one subskill involved in order to be able to answer it correctly. In listening, for example, we use almost 30 different tags. For ease of discussion, we will just call these different functions and knowledge and abilities subskills. Now, when you have a large number of people taking the same test, it is possible to look for patterns in test takers' answers to items involving different subskills. We can discover which subskills people learn first or which combinations of subskills they master before they do well on another subskill. And that is what we did. We collaborated with a professor from in California to do just this kind of analysis using data from our test takers in South America. So a big shout out to our friends over there. A lot of this work would not have been possible without you. We now, as a result of this work, have empirically validated insights into how a large group of learners from different countries, learning in a range of different contexts, develop mastery reading in English as a second or foreign language. Now, as I mentioned, there are many subskills involved in reading. For the purposes of this discussion, we will just group them into five. First is knowledge of vocabulary. Second is knowledge of grammar. The third is the ability to read for detail, which involves explicitly given information, which might sometimes be paraphrased and, you know, using a different set of words. The fourth is reading for connection and global information, such as reading for main idea, the author's opinion, the, referen the use of referencing, and similar things. And finally, fifth, there is reading for inference, such as uh, understanding the pragmatic implication or uh, what the rhetorical function of a, a piece of text is. Now I'd like to show you uh, what our modeling revealed. So in our modeling, it actually shows that you first need to learn vocabulary, have a good base of vocabulary, a good knowledge of the structure of English, and be able to read for detail. And it is the ability to do these three that allows you to go on and develop mastery in uh, global reading as well as in reading for inference. As you can see, in many ways, these are the real reading functions, and here is the language base you need in order to be able to perform them. Now, on the whole, I think these findings should not be surprising to anyone, except perhaps for one point. I suspect some of us might expect that uh, a reader needs to master vocabulary first, in order to be able to read and understand detail. But our data shows that this isn't in fact the case. There's actually a significant proportion of test takers who were able to master detail, that is they're able to answer detail related questions, even when they have not yet mastered vocabulary. I guess what this suggests is that um, English learners uh, who might not yet have developed an adequate vocabulary resource in English, are able to draw upon reading strategies in their first language to understand parts of the text, maybe using, you know, maybe drawing clues from the surrounding text 
and this surrounding text might involve simpler language um, that does not uh, require higher level vocabulary. There is in fact consensus in our field that literacy skills in one's first language uh, can actually transfer over to reading in a second language. And uh, this re these research findings are in, cord, in, in accord with that. So I would say that as a result of this in your teaching, it might be good to keep the order of mastery in mind. You might want to consider whether your students have enough of a solid base in these top three before spending too much time on the bottom two that involve uh, text level comprehension or at the very least, you know, larger chunks of text. Perhaps work with them first on um, shorter chunks of text, um, sentence level things, or, you know, one or two sentences to develop their knowledge of the grammar of English, the structure of English, perhaps prime them by um, pre-teaching vocabulary so that they can engage with text. We do know from research that unless you actually understand at least 95% of the words in the text, you're going to have significant gaps in your understanding. So teaching them vocabulary would not be a bad idea. It also wouldn't be a bad idea to tell them to think about their reading skills in their first language and how they might apply it to reading in English. And keep in mind, um, it seems it's because that is the case, because uh, it's not so much a reading issue for them as it is perhaps a language issue in many cases. And keep in mind, there is no dependency among the top three, so you can teach them at the same time, perhaps, you know, moving from one to the other, so that with a variety in your teaching, they will be fresh. And sometimes it's the number of exposures we have that is helpful. So instead of just focusing on vocabulary exclusively before moving on to grammar, better to actually move back and forth among them. Well, I think I probably said too much. I hope this has been useful. I, for one, am very grateful whenever you know, the things that we intuitively know about language learning is confirmed by the research evidence. In the next installment of this video series, I will cover the findings for the subskills involved in listening. The findings uh, for that skill is actually somewhat more unexpected and surprising. So I hope you will join me again. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.